Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be watching Maxor's Doom Eternal Review, Alpha Male Gaming. In the comment section of my Bloodborne video, my Maxor Doll Waifu Simulator video, um, a few people said I should watch the Doom review as I've played a little bit of Doom um, and they said it might help me revisit the game. I'm not sure if, I've, if I'm ever going to finish Doom. Um... I enjoyed it and it was really a different style of game for me, but it was chaotic. Um, and when I put it down, I forgot like what weapons did what, because I feel like you have to be really specific with what you use. Um, so hopefully maybe one day I'll revisit it, but let's see if this video does that for me. Like I said in the Bloodborne video, Maxor's original video will be in the description box and the link to Maxor's channel will also be in the description box. So let's go. It's not working. This is awkward. <laughs> I swear to God, if you throw me into that portal, I will fuck you. You were never one of us. Nothing but an imposter. Among us. False crewmates. Among us. Oh, I don't like that. <laughs> Doom music is amazing. Oh my god, Doom it's so Eternal good. Doom Eternal is a game with so much testosterone dripping from its orifices <laughs> that it caused me to create a sun via mitosis. In this adventure, you play as John Doom, John a man Doom. stricken John with Blackboard. irrationally severe autism who does not consider or think through his actions and effects on other people. And in his quest to save <laughs> mankind, kills God, God God, and Satan God God, who is also himself. If this in-depth and engaging hardcore male gameplay sounds appealing, then I've got the game for you. This game is of course the sequel to the critically acclaimed Doom 2016 with a few key differences. <laughs> All right, then, buddy. I'm going to shit yourself. <laughs> Which meaningfully extends and builds off of the gameplay and challenges that we love. Then extends them some more very off chaotic. the fucking cliff until the product that emerges out the other side resembles crack concentrate. If you're watching this, I'm assuming you've probably played the game since I don't actually want to help people buy things. I'm here to entertain people and if you're clamoring for entertainment and haven't purchased this game yet, do yourself a favor. There's enough male hormones here to transition someone, and I can guarantee you results, <laughs> my fellow Sigma males. So whether you're a psychopath <laughs> like me or new to modern Doom games, come with me on this amazing journey. Oh, I love that he cracks himself up. You can hear him giggling. I love that. I love that he like clearly doesn't take everything like really seriously. And um, watching a Viati video... Um, Bloodborne story explained in the prepare to cry and nearly being on the verge of tears and then coming to a Maxor review like both is such quality content but Maxor's like crazy editing and intense like voiceover and the fact that he like ha can have a laugh and a joke like I really enjoy that it's like 100% guaranteed to put you in a good mood Twitch gameplay, beautiful environments, nonsensically fucked up lore, and remixed Mongolian throat <laughs> singing. For money is temporary, but doom is eternal. <laughs> I would say that Doom Eternal's gameplay is quite unique, and not for the reasons that you would think. Everything in Doom Eternal is funneled directly into a single, robust, multifaceted, multinational, <laughs> and unilaterally combat system, from which the entire game is built around. But Maxor, I hear you thinking, that's every game ever. Yes every good game ever. If I, for instance, became 12 and booted up GTA 5, I would be able to do at least a dozen unfun activities. Doom's design is focused harder than the average Persona fan on his local playground, and that is special. <laughs> you will play the game in the way that is fun, or you will lose. So as yeah, good as 2016 true. was, the Polygon journalist it. could beat the first half, and that's unacceptable. Because yes, it is actually unfun to play games after having a lobotomy. In other games, I get to choose between things like stealth, vehicles, or outright combat. Bad. Yet Doom Eternal asks the question, why not force you to use every mechanic all the time without stopping? In a world where AAA studios yeah. try to pander to everyone, it's refreshing to have a game that sets out to do one thing the best and actually have developers who give a shit about linear design and gameplay. And the main component of that gameplay is the arsenal, because John Doom uses every weapon throughout <laughs> the game. The first shotgun is used in the last level, and the last level is used by the first shotgun. When you get an upgrade, it isn't a replacement, it's a genuine addition to your arsenal. Every yeah, that's so true. Like every weapon 
to me was very specific and you had a weapon for everything. The only thing I found was though, because I'd never played a game like that before, I used to forget that I had certain things. Like you had like, I can't even remember the names of things because it was so long ago, but like you had like the Doom punch like the mega punch and it would build up on a meter and then you had like the flame belch to get like more health back or something but then like I'd forget I have the mega punch and then I'd forget I'd have something else and then like all of a sudden I'd be like oh crap like I've got this mechanic that I'm not using um so I feel like doom for me is something that you have to repeatedly play to like get it in your brain one of them has specific uses, and yet these don't interfere at all. They enhance. How do I kill an enemy? Well, shoot his hands off. Fire a rocket. Fire a ballista. Fire flame. <laughs> freeze him. Fire fire on his freezing pro shotgun. Shotgun. Brain aneurysm. Just as important as how you kill is how you heal and how you restore. Fortunately, the aggression of this game rivals my dog in a kindergarten. Like real life, the only way to get ahead of the competition is to Not kill them. How do I heal when low? Kill them. How do I get ammo back? Kill them with a chainsaw. In addition, most weapons yeah, in the game the have two mods. Completely oh, yeah. change their behavior. Such stunning examples would be the microwave beam, the automatic shotgun, and the fucking destroyer blade. God, that shit's cool. But on top of eight weapons, 12 mods, and a declining mental state, we keep going. More than any <laughs> one weapon, you'll be using your suit abilities, and they all have individual buttons. This is in addition to the eight that you use for weapons. These would be things like zoom for fast, grenade for death, Swedish grenade for life, punch for no reason, and a flamethrower for armor. I play Invoker in Dota 2, and this shit makes me play my keyboard like it's a fucking Moonlight Sonata. I thoroughly yeah. recommend playing PC and never using the weapon wheel for maximal Ritalin output. And if you can't switch weapons fast, <laughs> play on easy mode. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I, I'm a little bit convinced that Doom Eternal is what tipped my first PS5 controller over the edge and I've had to replace it. And I started noticing it was going and going and going and then it finally gave up in Resident Evil 2. So I've had to replace my controller. But I do feel like the pure chaos and panic of Doom Eternal definitely like psh, that remote. Um, or controller, should I say. But um, yeah, there was a lot of times as well where I'd be flying around the map and then I'd miss like demons right in front of my face because I'd be so busy trying to look over and behind and what was coming around the corner that there'd be literally like a demon straight in my face that would like punch me and I'd be like, where the hell did he come from? That's fine, man. We're all busy. How about I give you two more <laughs> buttons? You thought I was done. There's two ways to kill a demon in Doom Eternal. The fun way or the funny way. And to maximize <laughs> the funniness level, we have the Crucible, which is a direct, Whoa. instantaneous kill on every enemy. Giant oh, area boss, dead. Previous area boss, dead. The final boss, fuck him. Now I hear you Whoa. thinking, Josh, that sounds pretty strong. Oh boy, buckle your ass. Because the second super weapon on my extensive list of two things is the BFG, which canonically stands for big fucking gun. Also canonically, it fires a hole directly <laughs> into the core of Mars. You can't just shoot a hole into the surface of Mars. Oh. <laughs> now, I could kill an enemy the long way, or I could kill him and his dog faster than the ATF at Waco. Not it clears dog. out everything you can see instantly. I am so thankful <laughs> the game limits how many times you can do this. Now, I understand that at first this may seem complicated, but that just isn't true because the entire game is effectively a tutorial for hard Mode. And because yeah, you're always I learning so. as you play, it never feels stale. Doom even lets you choose what <laughs> stats and runes to upgrade. I spec'd entirely into mobility and ammo, making my character a flimsy, crack-addled spider monkey. As a side <laughs> note, we should release dozens or possibly hundreds of macaques into New York City. They can survive there. Why does Thailand get to keep all of the good monkeys? So what more- Whoa, I didn't know monkeys just roam the street in Thailand. They can just like climb on your car and stuff. Oh my god, I'd love that. <gasps> Ah, oh, do I need to go to Thailand so I can see monkeys, maybe? There to learn about Doom Eternal. Well, have you ever given thought to the various unwashed baboons that I'm fighting? The answer may <laughs> shock you. Those are the... <laughs> As you may have guessed, there are at least three, perhaps four demons in the game, which is a lot for someone who is a small, blonde anime lolly such as myself. But it's the variety of the demons that make the game interesting. Demons can fly, they can roll around like hedgehogs, contract obesity, and be bastards. Who is Sandy Loam? Who is Sushima? Amy Rose? I didn't know she could stand. 
important. The point of the entire <laughs> game, therefore, is to balance targets, switch weapons, and scream internally as you repeatedly fail to be cool. Just like high school. What I'm getting at is every demon has completely different behavior and goals from one another. The Doom Hunter rolls around in a comically small tank. The zombies, like us, exist to die. And the Marauder produces controversy. He does a lot of damage, blocks your attacks, fights you at wild speeds, and can only be attacked after blatantly signaling so. I personally have no issue with him, as I find the challenge fun and engaging. And if you don't, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm saying you're bad. I'm not getting... Oh my god. The Marauder. I think I stopped playing just before I got to that bit. And I've heard that he's like really, really hard. And basically he can deflect all of your attacks and you basically have to like try and get behind him because of his shield. I think that would have tipped me over the edge, to be honest. <laughs> he looks so hard and he's pretty scary. The details for each one, since that's not funny, but don't worry, there are 27 of them without DLC. And if you're wondering why I'm fighting the entire cast of Dante's Inferno, you're actually <laughs> the minority. This game tries at every Dante's moment to make exposition Inferno. collectible. Why is there just a, a fucking big spear in the planet, and why is heaven comprised entirely of moth people? You cannot stop the procession. <laughs> it feels like one guy wrote the events of the game, and another guy invented LSD just to write the backstory. So I'm going to combine both of them into a single, accurate interpretation of the Doom lore. If I say something objectionable, just pretend that it's right. Okay, I don't know. So, yeah, we'll take his word for it. One Brazilian years ago, there was a guy <laughs> named The Dad who was effectively God, and he made moths in Lamp Heaven called The Makers. Every 10,000 years, all moths combine their collective consciousness into one giga moth called The Con Maker, who is the moth pope. So the moths rule over the galaxy, sort of, until Earth happens, and then we start fucking everything up. The moth pope That's finds it. John Doom after a spree of murders, and he explains to her that yes, hell exists. It's weird that humans knew about. <laughs> Charles Manson, no, please. <gasps> <laughs> Two thousand years later hell before God. Anyways, the Moth Pope, after finding out that hell is real, very reasonably decides to sacrifice a planet to it. See, it turns out that God literally pieced the fuck out like 10 million years ago and let the Moth do whatever they wanted. So now the Con Maker cannot be replaced and cannot die, so she sort of goes insane from the constant immortality. Now the plan is to get some of that sweet hell energy by repeatedly sacrificing entire planets <laughs> to the Dark Lord in exchange for it. Meanwhile, a sentient robot named Samuel Hayden is very busy on Mars. Earth has this problem called climate change, and we need to find a new energy source. So instead of something hard and difficult like solar power, Samuel Hayden is like, <laughs> what if we extract this cool blue energy from hell? Also, it's on oh. Mars. Oh. Earth does this until hell begins breaking into Mars and John Doom stops them, which is the plot of Doom 2016. This makes Samuel Hayden okay. mad because he's funded by the Koch brothers and really doesn't want to build a windmill. So instead of destroying the demonic crucible, he just brings it back to Earth and catapults John Doom into the backstory planet. If you think that sounds unreasonable, just remember that we considered blotting out the sun before building a fucking solar panel. I only poo-poo farted for the good of you. Humanity. Unsurprisingly, demons invade to recycle Earth into blue energy for the Moth Pope, so John Doom has to fight <laughs> both Catholics and Hell. And as you go through the game, you might notice that it just brings up random shit at will. Like, oh sorry, the Soul Factory is being held there by two gigantic titans, and it's like, okay, I guess Attack on Titan is real now. Doom Slayer, you'll need this knife to kill my son. Oh shit, what'd he do? He's the giant uncontrollable demon titan. The plot of the main game, to <laughs> understate it, is psychotic, and acts as an increasing checklist of galactically convoluted tasks. Just in this one game, John Doom finds an ancient city like three times, goes to the North <laughs> Pole to kill Santa, fights Croatia, does a little trolling, does a little cockfighting, invades heaven, and permanently kills God, but we'll get back to that. Doom 2016 took place on Mars, but this game has you slung around the universe on a fucking bungee cord, so I understand completely when people say they don't play Doom Eternal for the plot. They're just wrong. I play Doom Eternal for the plot, and that might sound strange to you, but Eternal's plot plot is pure insanity, and it does everything that it needs to. We are painfully aware that the plot exists as a contrivance because the environmental designer went fucking ballistic. I just- Okay, 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 okay. Um, yes. Wow, okay, there's a lot more to Doom than I think I really realized. Um, I knew about the Khan Makers, and I knew about, um, like, the Doom Slayer himself, like, going- 
around planets and hell and this that and the other but i didn't realize that there was like i didn't understand who samuel hayden was and that's his name right and then um go into all the different places i guess i didn't really understand why i was just like okay we'll go there what i will say is though the environments in doom are stunning like so beautiful the second area or the third area i can't even remember again what it's called unfortunately but um where you go and there's the big uh demon and then like almost like the robot um it's the thumbnail for my second video and i screenshotted it in my game because it's so beautiful like the actual design of doom is stunning care i played every single level gleefully wondering oh boy what stupid shit is next i cannot fucking wait <laughs> so play the game for the plot it is integral to the experience of doom eternal oh but max or there's a plot hole how did the doom slayer get the first everything i've said so far except some of it applies in full partially to the base game but there's 40 dollar reduce <laughs> of dlc where the gameplay is faster the challenge like, harder faster. and the plot somehow even fucking worse in all the right departments 2016 was a wash eternal is usain bolt and the ancient gods is fucking venezuelan inflation you thought it was over when john doom beat the demons and destroyed all of heaven but you were wrong that's just the beginning and with both parts of the dlc now fully out my recommendation cannot be understated let's get into why and more importantly what This section of the video is going to be different, far more structural, and aligned with the plot of the DLC. Because the gameplay isn't what's new about the product, it's the challenge and the story. I originally wrote an entire script for this and then trashed it because it doesn't truly communicate how this <laughs> DLC drove me to insanity and I hard cope by simping for 2D women. I will tell you if there's a very big gameplay change, but the point of the DLC is more of what's amazing. If you like Doom Eternal, you will like the DLC. Period. Okay, so Samuel Hayden, you might know him for his various appearances on political YouTube debates advocating for carbon positivity. It turns out that he's not a robot, he's a fucking angel. Also, John Doom's Alexa is God. That's not a joke or exaggeration. What? His name is Vega, and he is the physical remnant of God's consciousness in AI form. So Samuel, now a fucking divine being, wants you to revive him since both God and Satan are trapped in volleyballs. At this point, the video can't count as spoilers because it makes no fucking sense. The first DLC is essentially Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So... God's consciousness is Vega, the little man in your ear in the game. The whole time. because you kill God. Why? Well, obviously to revive Satan exclusively so you can fight him. What could go wrong? Of particular note here on the gameplay side is the final boss, who is Samuel Hayden. Because holy shit, this fight is hard. Also, the premise is ridiculous and my enjoyment of the game is hurt by neither. Every aspect of this is speedy, fun, and everything else I've already oh said God, about the game so in general. And when you finally beat Samuel and revive the Dark Lord, it turns out he's you. What? Yeah. The only thing in the world that could possibly kill John Doom himself. It's John Doom. <laughs> no blood. But he's rich. He's got muscles in his neck. Why do you need those? Holy blood. So now the not you you decides to go to hell where we all belong, and the second DLC is just chasing him. This is, of course, where the testosterone moves into critical levels. How does one get to the capital city of hell? Well, that's a great Cleveland. question. First of all, go to the planet of Argentinur. Light the bat signal. Learn how to train your dragon, okay? Go into the giant spear that pierces the entire planet for some reason. Get the key to the gate of Divum. Now go back to Earth, traverse the Last of Us 2, and find the gate of Divum. But before I get to the final showdown with Crash Bandicoot Twin Sand, there's some cool <laughs> gameplay I want to talk about. You have a fucking hammer in this DLC. Primarily used to defy the laws of gravity, but secondarily gives you everything in the game. Health? No problem. Ammo? Absolutely. My <laughs> deepest, darkest urges? Yes. As I used this, I became more obsessed with hammers than Bob the fucking builder. And there's plenty of demons to use it on, since the DLC adds a shitload of reskins. For instance, the spirit is a congealed amphetamine mass that makes every infested target three times faster. Microsoft Pinball, who is fun to fight, I promise. And the blood 
Love Makers. They are my original OC. Do not That's steal scary. it. So now that we've reached Cleveland, it's time for the DLC to gain style. This is the culmination <laughs> of all of our work. The final battle against Satan himself. And holy shit, you can feel it. When the Sentinel army shows up and everyone's ready to kick ass, you just can't help but feel like your dick is being tickled. Cleveland lives up to the hype too, for once, because it's a non-stop <laughs> battle of epic proportions right up until the final boss. This is a universe which implicitly acknowledges your godlike power by making the only credible threat to you your identical twin with red eyes in a Gundam. That is called fucking gameplay. And it's a beautiful send-off right up until the man himself who awkwardly waddles around the arena like a penguin, but oh, that's no. fine, the fight is still cool. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you know, it's so sad that Steve Jobs died in Ligma. Who the hell is Steve Jobs? Ligma balls. <laughs> Got him. Now, before we defenestrate, <laughs> there's a few details I want to talk about that truly complete this game, make it a real 10 out of good. Firstly, I would classify the music of this game as metal without guitars, and I fucking yeah. dig it so much. How do you 100%. make metal without a guitar? Well, you sample Mongolian throat singing and your lawnmower. <laughs> It just sounds so good. It Normally, does. music isn't very important, but it's so good that it becomes important. And the role it plays in setting your mood is vital. Like also, the main composer the Mick Gordon, like me, hey watches virtual YouTubers every waking second of his day. Great minds think alike. In fact, most of the music in this video is just Doom Eternal soundtrack. Guess you'll have to rewatch it over and over again to really listen. Yeah, it's so sick. It's so good. <laughs> Finally, this game looks really good. Not. Oh wow, look at all these particles I'm stroking out way. It's more like, how does literally anyone have time to model all of the geometry in the game? It is unreal. It is so downright inspired that it makes you feel bad while playing it. I like cry when I laugh and that meme has just hit me over the edge. <laughs> oh dear. Eternal is such a fast and pulse-pounding game that it's like sprinting through the fucking Louvre. How am I supposed to appreciate the Mona Lisa when it looks like this? Should you buy the game? Yes, I am yes. very biased. If speed and action is what you crave and you want to induce cardiac arrest early, this is your game. <laughs> I would like to thank the Demonic Brotherhood funding this channel in exchange for their souls. If you would like to engage in blood sacrifice on my behalf, you can head to my Patreon to learn more. Thank you all for watching, and of course, run, they're coming. <laughs> I will make more videos. This is a threat. Oh my god. I really enjoyed that. That made me like cry laugh. That was so funny. Um, yeah, that was really funny. Who to the people who suggested that I watch that, like absolutely. Um, it has made me want to play Doom again, so you were very right. Um, I like that he <laughs> I like that in his videos he talks to you about the themes of the game, the gameplay, like the content, the environment, and then he has like a conclusion. So it feels like I don't even need to play it because he's told me everything that I need to know. And I think he's really funny and I like that he cracks himself up. Um, definitely agree with like Doom, the music. The music for me was like the bit that really got me like hyped playing it. There was, um, I think, is it called Rip and Tear? And um, like the first bit of the game, that industrial like metal sound is like the kind of music I really like. And there's a song in the area that I got up to. And um, it, if you've been watching me for a while, you know that like Bad Omens are one of my favourite bands and one of my favourite songs ever is Dethrone by Bad Omens. And um, there's a song in Doom that sounds just like that. And when it came on, I like lost it. Um, so yeah, like definitely agree. Like the music, like that soundtrack got me specifically like really hyped because I like that kind of music. Almost gives me like that WWE energy. Remember when they used to walk out to like all oh, like the metal and stuff and you'd be like, yeah, but um, maybe that's just a me thing. I don't know. <laughs> but um, yeah, thank you for recommending me for watching that video. I really enjoyed it. It's definitely put me in a good mood. I had a crap day at work today and this has just sorted me right out. So 
Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for hanging out with me. Hit that like button if you enjoyed it. And again, Maxor's details, this video will be linked below. And I will see you in the next one.